Okay, good morning. I'd like to take a few moments with you this morning just to talk about the new world of work and some of the things that we've discovered over the course of uh, our investigation and how people work today. If you could, thank you. The traditional office is changing and, and there are many reasons and demographics of why the office is changing. If we think about it, uh, right now we have 46% of the workforce by 2020 will be millennials in the workplace. And we have to think of how those millennials have come to work and what ideas and innovation they bring with them. The innovation is such that most of the time they are anytime, anywhere access to critical information. They live on their iPhones. They live on their laptop. They live on their iPads. And they intend to do the same thing in the work environment. So things are changing uh, in the traditional office. We've noticed that um, there's a consolidation of real estate that is, is, has a cost and benefit to it as well. Um, the cloud connectivity and infrastructure is such that now anybody can work anytime, any place, 24-7, 365 around the world and not be connected to a physical office space or cubicle. We have discovered that in, in normal real estate that it costs $15,000 per employee to have a facility ready for their use, and that's a desk and a chair and conference rooms and restrooms and uh, lunch areas. But we have also found that 30 to 40 percent of that workspace is vacant at any given time. I think we can all look at our own office and see that in operations and in sales, um, a lot of days it's a ghost town. That people are out conducting business, but they're conducting business at the client site, and that's where we need to be. The millennials uh, by 2020 again are, are going to by 2020. I'm sorry, uh, going to be comprising 46 percent of our workforce. So that means that we need to kind of innovate and, and become more agile in, in how we do business. And the agility comes with 40 percent uh, or 50 percent of the workforce will be working from non-traditional locations. That can be from home, from a, from a remote office, uh, could be from, I think someone that's at Starbucks or Panera Bread, and that is uh, that's a fine way to go. What, we, what we're looking for is to change that um, language of innovation and agility. And if we take that, uh, those two words, what is innovation? Innovation is taking something that has been traditionally the way it has been, and changing it to be more effective, more efficient, and more cost-effective uh, for everyone involved. Agility. I think of what agility is as a definition, and I think of maybe this weekend with agility training for dogs, in that they're, they're taught how to go through tunnels, go around weaving barriers, go over teeter-totters, go over ramps, and that, that requires some agility and different thinking of how we do business. So one of the things that we're changing, and, and it's, it's organizational in nature, is we need to attract and retain the right talent, secure access to information, increase employee engagement, efficient use of real estate, and foster collaboration and, and innovation. The secure access to, in, in, secure access to information uh, is really key and critical to developing a remote workplace and a different environment. What stands in the way of change? Um, department silos, paper-based and unstructured information. Uh, there's nothing so long lived as a lost piece of paper in a filing cabinet. Uh, you spend so much time looking for it, you can regenerate the information much, much faster. Budget and cost control. Um, legacy infrastructure, and again, that le legacy infrastructure comes in the, in the form of office buildings, office space, workspace, conference rooms, uh, cubicles, offices, and then the employee adoption of new technology and new way of doing business. We have discovered at RICO bringing in uh, our own consultant group uh, in how we are going to transform our world of work. As I said before, any given day you can look around our office and 30 or 40 percent of the office is empty, it's vacant. And what we've decided to do is make it a more collaborative and open space where people can come to work, collaborate, and lead, and find all the resources there um, that they need. And that includes whiteboards and meeting rooms and, and huddle rooms, and very collaborative uh, environment.
the key value areas that we talk about are those things that are going to transform business and transform the environment from where we are today to where it's going to be perhaps in 2020. We talked about process transformation, enterprise mobility, governance risk and compliance, customer experience, and work style innovation. What I want to talk about with you today is one of those things that really kind of takes into, into account all of the pieces that are here, processing information, enterprise mobility, governance, risk, and compliance, customer experience, work style innovation. And that has to do with how do we engage and receive information. What I'm going to focus on right now is intelligent mail. Because intelligent mail has a lot of capabilities to do all those things we're talking about. This is, this is the challenge that comes into play with, with capturing your information. It's slow, tedious, and how are you going to make that portable in a digital environment? Intelligent mail solves that in a number of different ways. And not to be confused with digital mail. Digital mail is the ability to scan a document and send it to your email. That is better than getting the hard copy, but it's also not intelligent. So what we're going to do is try to take a look at some of the things that would make it more efficient. Um, lost or misplaced data is always something that is, is necessary to, uh, to track, track back. <laughs> Got it, okay. And the lack of an audit trail. The questions that we all, all, all have for each other is do we need to increase the accuracy and or timeliness of information going into another image-enabled system? And that can be uh, whether or not it's going to go to accounts receivable, accounts payable, different things that is transactional correspondence that takes to run the business or something that is uh, other than transactional. Which departments are experiencing performance declines due to increased volume of incoming mail? And does your organization need better transparency in reporting? There's a lot of, a lot of talk today about transparency and accountability. And this is a way to achieve that at a relatively good pace and, and good expense. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. Um, are you concerned about documents being lost or misplaced or simply taking too long to enter core systems? Uh, do they have to man manage multiple systems and processes to get the information they need to do their jobs? Are users able to quickly access information from mobile devices or remote locations? That's all key to the new work environment. Are you concerned about the high cost of pushing paper? Again, I said earlier that there's nothing so long-lived as a piece of paper that's been missing out of a filing cabinet you can't find it. What records retention and or government reporting requirements do you face? How auditable are your mail intensive processes today? And would you be able to respond to regulatory requests or court order to produce documents for specific users over a one year period? We've found in a lot of cases now that um, documents and accountability follow a pattern of if something does go wrong, can we track back and be accountable and see throughout the process whose hands touched this document? who took action on this document, and what were the results. What we're trying to do is to make information work with uh, intelligent mail capture. And, and this is a, a way to spend smarter, build a better audit trail, and to optimize the information that you're receiving. Intelligent mail capture is, is really um, a very interesting way to go. And there's some benefits on the back side that I'll, I'll tell you about. But the process can be that uh, it can be done two different ways. Rico can receive all of your inbound mail, either on-site or off-site. I recently did a presentation for a government agency where we talked about an off-site capture of their intelligent mail. That mail is taken, uh, is uh, scanned, both front and back, a high-speed Rico camera takes a photo of it. It enters the customer's email, uh, LDAP, and whoever that, that piece of information, that letter or mail piece is addressed to will tie to the customer's email system. That person will receive an email, not of the contents of the letter, but it will, it will have an image of both the front and the back. And that is available by the recipient 24 hours a day, 365, 
all around the world, wherever there is web access and, and access to their email system, they have access to their mail immediately. We deliver and route that, and the information goes to where and when it's needed in the format you choose. So it can be customizable to taking a look at how do you want that information delivered um, to the recipient. The recipient has the ability to to return information that makes it a truly intelligent, not just digital mail, but intelligent mail. If, for example, uh, a letter comes in or an invoice comes in from Acme Mining and it's addressed to Joe Smith, well, Joe Smith keeps getting this information, but it's not his. It belongs to Tom Peters. So he can actually go back into the, into the system and redirect that mail to Tom Peters. And from henceforth into the future, that mail will be directed to Tom Peters never hitting him again. It is a managed services solution. It uses Rico people, and this, it's a legacy of, of work style innovation. Rico has a very, very long history of being very innovative with the work style. We've, do, we've done things um, in, in some of us knows by the copier business. There's typically three or four generations of copiers that are being researched and developed. Wall is like one on the market right now. Rico infrastructure, high-speed scanners and advanced capture software. Rico was once known as, uh, and is known as, a very high-end uh, camera solution. And because we also have partnerships with some of our software technologies, uh, technologies we can capture that, that information and transmit it where we need to be. This is a transaction-based fee model. No capital investment or IT maintenance costs are involved. This is probably one of the most uh, interesting to, to clients is that they can now, not think about having a mailroom on site, not having labor on site, having full and transparent and accountability for their incoming mail, a means of auditing all of that mail, because everything has a date, a time, and tracking. The cost effectiveness uh, of, of the mail goes beyond really just the transactional cost because the, the government agency that I had presented to uh, a short time ago, they get a lot of incoming mail. And a lot of the mail, as we know, is, for all intents and purposes, maybe 40 to 50% is what we call junk mail, or as I used to call it, promotional printing. That can now never come inside the walls of that building. So consequently, they're not responsible for disposal, shredding, recycling, that all becomes Rico's responsibility. We gladly accept that responsibility. We do we do charge a fee uh, for those for the services. What it, what this does as well is optimize the inf information so that it can be taken care of immediately. The recipient of the mail can immediately respond back to the mailroom and say, "Scan the image to scan the document to me. Scan it and archive it. Um, scan it. Uh, send the hard copy to my office. I'll be back next week." And so there's just a lot of a lot of flexibility and accountability and transparency in using electronic and intelligent mail. Thank you for your time.